there internets and welcome to Review Wars where I invite other reviewers to come and give nominations for the best game in a category and then you the viewers get to vote on the winner and this time we're talking about the best two player games out there so we're talking those games that are only playable as two players so let's take a look at the nominations Hello, it's me, Michael May of Board Deck and Dice <coughs> Yeah right, <coughs> he wishes and today I'm presenting you my uh, choice for the best two-player game and I have chosen Raptor. This is what I would call a light asymmetrical game, meaning that you play uh, different sides that play differently but you're using the same method of card selection and that works the same way for both sides, uh, whether you're scientists or raptors. If you're playing as the raptors, you are trying to get three of your baby raptors out of the forest or the desert, depending on which side you play, or you're trying to kill all the scientists on the board. If you're a scientist, you're trying to capture three of the baby raptors, or hit the mummy raptor with five sleeping darts, which puts her to sleep. These scientists can lay fire, they can move around in jeeps, they can call for reinforcements. The raptor, mummy raptor, can call her babies to her, she can disappear and reappear on the board at will. She's got more movement than the scientists, she can scare the scientists. Uh, so it plays really, really well. The board is modular, but not um, huge. It's not going to make a huge amount of difference to the game. Um, the, the desert side has more uh, open tiles in it than the jungle side, and other than that, you're just spinning them round and perhaps changing the way the end tiles go. And this game has some really, really good player sheets that give you all the actions that are available to both sides. And the way you'll play this game is by playing, you'll have one to cards numbered 1 to 9, and each card apart from 9 will also have a, a special action on it. You will shuffle up your deck, you will draw 3, and then you will choose one of those cards to play simultaneously. Once you've both chosen, you'll flip them over, and the person who's played the lowest number will get to use the special action. The person who's played the highest number will get to do that many... Uh, moves or actions minus the lowest number. So if you play a 9 and I play a 1, you're going to be able to do 8 actions, but I'm going to be able to do the 1 special action. So there's a real choice between do I want to use normal actions and as many as possible to get an advantage, or do I need to use a special action here to uh, curry the favour back in my direction. At first it's a bit of blind luck because you don't know what the other person's played but each card, each time a card's played that becomes public knowledge so as the game goes on unless you play a one card which lets you take all your cards back your opponent can kind of work out what's in your hand and what you're likely to play. Raptor is a fun game um, that plays quickly, it has great uh, components and as a two-player game, this is one I can bust out and explain really quickly and have a deep uh, battle with someone. Um, it's not too light, it's not too deep, it hits that itch. My honourable mention for this would have been Starfighter, but I just felt that was a bit deeper, a bit less known. Um, so I've gone with the best two-player game, a Raptor. That is Board Deck and Dice's selection for best two-player game. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, I'm Benjamin David from the Board Game Vault, home of the clear and concise two-minute review. And this Review Wars challenge was a pretty easy one for me because I think Star Realms is a pretty hands-down obvious winner. Now if you have never played Star Realms before, it is a space-themed two-player only deck builder. I mean you can get expansions for it, but it's definitely best with two players. It's like a very intense tennis game uh, with playing cards. Check it out. The game includes 128 cards, including the starting cards, upgraded cards for purchase, and the scoring cards. Each player begins with 50 authority using these nifty double-sided scoring cards, and the goal of the game is to build your fleet of ships and bases so you can be the first to bring your opponent down to zero authority. Each player also begins with two viper ships and eight scout ships. Those are shuffled and form your starter deck. On your turn, you will take the top five cards of the deck as your hand, and then primarily buy better cards from the trade row with your trade, and then attack your opponent with your combat. In this game, ships are vertical cards, and when they are drawn, they are used once and then discarded. 
The horizontal bases, on the other hand, are left out in play and used every turn until your opponent can destroy them. Now the outpost bases must be destroyed by your opponent before they can attack your authority, whereas with regular bases, your opponent can choose whether or not to destroy them or to attack your authority. Lastly, the card's main ability will usually be in the top box. For example, this card gives you two extra trade, this card gives you five extra combat, and allows you to draw a card. Now abilities with a faction symbol next to them require that you have another ship or base of that faction in play on your turn. For example, if I had both of these blue cards in play at the same time, then they would activate each other's secondary abilities, giving me an extra 5 authority and an extra 4 authority. Then there's the trash can, which means you have to get rid of the card for the rest of the game, and you get to use that ability once. Because of this, players often try to purchase cards of one or two factions so that they have higher odds of activating those secondary abilities. But there are many different strategies that can win the game. So with so many, I mean, truly amazing two-player games out there, what really makes Star Realms rise to the top? Well, first of all, it's very easy to learn. I mean, this game works well with first-time gamers as well as old-time veterans. Second, this game has very fast gameplay and short game times, as low as 15 to 20 minutes per game. So if you only have 15 to 20 minutes for a game, you can play Star Realms. If you have an hour or two, you can play Star Realms. Just Play as many games as you want. Third, the actions on your turn are simple, but there's a great depth of strategy. And this is really at the core of what it means for a game to be well designed. I mean, in Star Realms, you're going to have your hand of cards, do what they say, and then buy some cards from the trade row, attack your opponent, and that's really it. But throughout all of that, you're deciding, what factions do I want? How many factions do I want to go with? Uh, am I going to go for bases, for defense? And as I acquire cards, am I just going to get the ones that are best for me, or am I going to look out for the ones that might be good for my opponent? Fourth, the chains in this game are amazing. I mean, pretty early on in the game, you're going to get cards that activate other special abilities, which allow you to draw more cards, activating other abilities, allowing you to draw more cards. And this chain just keeps going, and once you get to that point in the game, it is absolutely exhilarating. Fifthly, this game just has amazing replayability. I mean, I've played this game well over 100 times, and it's still one of my go-to games. I'll try different factions. I'll try different numbers of factions. I'll buy a bunch of ships one game, or buy a bunch of bases another game. And sometimes I'll just see what my opponent's going for, and just buy those, and watch them squirm. It just, it just hasn't gotten old. Lastly, the size and price of this game just put it over the edge. I mean, first of all, this amazing game fits in a small deck of cards, which is an amazing feat on its own. But not only that, you can get that small deck of cards, usually for between 10 and 15 bucks on Amazon. You gotta be honest, how many games are that good and fit in a $13 deck, which you can take anywhere you want to go? Well, I'm Benjamin David from the Board Game Vault. That's my vote, and it should be yours too. The best two-player game is Patchwork by Mayfair Games. And you can tell this because it even says on the box it's for two players. It makes it clear and obvious from the beginning this was always meant to be a two player game and it does it superbly. The nature of the game is that you are trying to build the best quilt. Okay, not my most favorite theme, but it will definitely appeal to some people out there. You'll do this by picking pieces and placing them on your board. Your board is a grid, you cannot place a piece over another piece. So you're trying to fill in gaps where you can, and the spatial awareness of where you put your pieces, how you fit them all together, is really interesting. Now, how you get those pieces is by using money, which is one of the two currencies in this game. Your money is buttons, and you'll gain money based on when you pass a certain point on the time track. And time is the other currency in this. So your pieces that you've bought will dictate how much income you get when you pass a certain time. They also use up time, which is what moves you along the track. So it's possible for you to jump really far ahead and then your opponent gets loads of free turns while they're catching up to you time-wise. Because that's a really elegant fact of this game, is that time board means that it's not your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. You have to gauge what makes the most sense. Is it to spend a lot of time on something 
but it's a really good something so it makes it worthwhile, or to pick up lots of little things that will add up to a big something. And so it has this elegant aspect there with regards to managing your time resource as well as managing your button resource, which is your money. And of course, you've got to factor into this when you're picking a patch to put on your board. How big a patch do you get? What shape of a patch do you get? Do you get the patch that gives you the most income or costs the most time? There is huge amounts to think about in this game. And that is what makes this game fantastic. It is so strategic. You have this head to head. Well, if I go here, they might take that. If I go there, everything you do will directly influence your opponent, but not in a nasty take that way. It is such a good couples game for that fact that you are against each other. What you're doing is interacting and affecting each other. But the worst you have is, oh, I wanted to take that piece. Oh, I expected you to go there and then I could have got this piece. There's no nastiness in this game. It is a fun, light game, but with so much strategy. I mean, a game of this is so quick as well that you can play it in short, like 20 minutes to a half hour. And so you can play game after game, and it works fantastically if you're just a couple waiting for people to come to game night, you just got a bit of spare time there. And also, because it's a short game, it's also a really simple game. It's much more simple than you would expect for how long it takes to play. It's literally take a piece, place it. And then you've got the aspect of income. There's really not a lot to this, making it very simple to play with all sorts of people. It is such an easy to learn, easy to play game that people will love it. But the thing that makes this the best possible two player game is that it has this randomized setup. You have all of these pieces set out in a circle and there are a lot of them. But that circle isn't fixed. Every game you're randomly building this circle with all these pieces. So there's so many different possible combinations of how your circle of what you're buying from is going to change each game, which is fantastic. It means you've got the replay game value of a random game, but with the deep strategy of a game like chess or Go. So you have the best of both worlds. That is why Patchwork from Mayfair Games is the best two-player game. The best game is Go. It's an abstract game of such simple rules. Put down your piece anywhere you want on the grid. But then when surrounded pieces are removed, it's got such ramifications, such depth, so many permutations that until 2016, the top human players could still beat the top computers. You can play for a lifetime and never plumb those depths. And when you're playing, it's as if you're reaching into history and it's a touchstone from 4,000 however many or more years ago. But really the reason I love it so much is because of the handicap system. It lets me share this with everyone. It's so elegant. Simply give the weaker player some extra stones to start off with. You can play on the smaller board, on bigger board, 13 by 13, 9 by 9, even 7 by 7. You're still playing with the same tactics, but as you get bigger, then it, you start to see it unfold. And it's still the same game, you're still exploring the same things. And it's part of the cool culture of Go. What's your strength, people will say. And then your strength is tied into how many stones you should be given. And so it's a beautiful journey. And you can bring anyone along. So come on, join me for some Go. Hi, I'm Mike Lee from Who Dares Rolls. This being Review Wars, what better than to pick a game representing the greatest and most high stakes battle ever fought? Fantasy Flight, Star Wars Rebellion, it's a colossal box, chock full of toys and nostalgic nerd joy and a galaxy far, far away. It's our beloved original Star Wars trilogy in a box. This is a dudes on a map, and what a map. Each location and planet is dripping in familiar names and childhood memories. The game features asynchronous play with one player taking control of a well-known ragtag group of rebels involved in an intergalactic game of hide and seek against the evil galactic empire, who is doggedly trying to find the location of the hidden base and destroy it. 
The Rebels game is one of misdirection and bluff. Thematically, it's bang on, imbuing the Rebel players' turns with a sense of desperation as they sneak about sabotaging facilities and muddying the loyalties of planets via diplomatic missions. They have one goal, to survive long enough for the game's time track to catch up to their score marker. This can be manipulated by completing missions like blowing up Death Stars, the less glamorous bothering like hiding Grand Moff Tarkin's slippers. The Imperials, they must find that base. Besides an unlimited factory line of Star Destroyers, Atats and freshly cloned Stormtroopers, oh my, the ace in the hole is the probe deck which contains a card for each planet in the game, minus the Rebels' hidden base. The tension is delicious as for each turn it slowly reduces the possible base locations as the net closes in. While they go about that, they can entertain themselves like a cat with an unusually large ball of twine by toying with the rebels, keeping them always on the run, and enacting increasingly nefarious schemes like capturing rebel leaders followed by a spot of interrogation, or building technological terrors like the Death Star. Ah yes, the Imperial player is never short of something delightfully evil to do. All of the main actions are completed via worker placement, taken in turns. Players pick a leader and assign them to a mission in the system, either from a core hand of four or any of the additional ones drawn throughout the game. Each offers richly thematic and familiar situations from the Holy Trilogy. Whether it's sending a confused Solo to be trained as a Jedi or equally baffled Luke turned into a cup and popsicle, it's a fanboy nirvana for sure getting to dabble with the possibilities of rewriting our beloved saga. And this being Star Wars, then you can war it up a plenty with daring raids on far-flung outposts or desperate dogfights in the depths of space via some satisfying dice action. This is the ultimate lazy Sunday afternoon game, and for a Star Wars fan it's a chance to repeatedly experience a well-loved story a little differently each time you dive in. So crank up the volume on the back catalogue of soundtracks and settle yourself down for a couple of hours worth of joy. Now tell me, how can that not be the greatest two-player game ever? And so we have our five nominations for the best two-player game. But it's now time for you to decide who the winner is. You can do this by putting your vote in the YouTube comments or upvoting someone else's comment that you agree with. I'll then collate all this and get back to you in about a week's time with the winner. Do join us then to also find out what our next Review Wars category will be. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and if you have please do subscribe to the channel as well as checking out the rest of the videos and also checking out our contributors channels. And as always thanks for watching and bye for now.